And he was breaking just like this all the way through the weekend. He's desperately unlucky not to make a ball there. He just needs to be able to repeat that. And he should be fine because he's got such a good cue ball off the break. Doesn't hit it with loads and loads of power, but his control is, is pretty impressive. I must admit, was really, really impressed with Ryan this weekend. Not just for the present, but at 27, he's a relative nipper in the pool world, and he's got a long way ahead of him. Yeah, you can play this game for an awful long time. Long career ahead of Ryan, for sure, especially considering how big the game is in Malta. But it is first opportunity here for Josh Kane, and a good opportunity as well. He might just bump the one off the cushion. First shot, he decided against it. Thinking three at the bottom, then track up and leave the one on the left-hand side as last ball. It would be your hardest ball as last ball, but as long as you land on it, it shouldn't be a problem ball. are always tough can never take them for granted I think Josh did that but the miss is in it's a surprising miss though it really is <coughs> they're not absolutely guaranteed you just don't expect a player at Josh's level to miss those sorts of balls we've seen Josh have those matches where He's played flawlessly, you know, we're talking absolutely flawless, you know, he's put together matches against some of the best players on the biggest oh, stages. I mean, his, his best is, is up there with, I mean, literally anyone. Yeah. <clears throat> his, his, his best is absolutely special. But as, as a lot of, you know, mercurial talents have it, you know, it's about not necessarily playing at your best all the time because that's not always possible. The reason why... Tom Cousins won this weekend is because his B game is probably one of the best in the world. Tom told, told us himself that he didn't really feel like himself and didn't play anywhere near his best of the second half of the final. He got there alone on his B game. I'd agree with him 100% as well. He's, I've seen him play an awful lot to know that he, as good as he was playing, it, it wasn't his absolute best, but it was when it was needed. Uh, just as, as this gone slightly wrong for Ryan, he may have had a touch of fortune. I think the plant's actually set to the jaw, so he might be able to squeeze it, or he might even be able to play it in off the yellow, but the problem with playing it in off the yellow would be the yellow would go safe. So if that is the case, it's not the right choice. Well, maybe the, the bottom one of the two goes bottom left, which sort of resolves the problem. Or play into it, but playing into it, not guaranteed to be on anything. played into it and he is on the ball he'll be fairly happy with this quite close to it a little jabby one Dave and Carl watch on thirsty work playing at that level <laughs> <laughs> didn't get to uh, to play too many shots because he was clearing them up so easily yeah, a little jabby one because you're quite close to it but gets enough on it to just go on through. I think I like the one over top left as my last ball. And sort of almost stop this dead in the middle and leave loads of angle and come down two cushions just to make sure you don't hit the red on the brake line. Eight ball left, eight ball will go in the right centre. this sort of situation you'd love the eight ball to be going bottom right that's his sort of natural connection but obviously doesn't but there's plenty of room to get onto it into other pockets mm. 
a little bit surprised at that because you're quite if you were going to go that way then he would have been better off going through uh, pulling back further on the previous shot so that the, he's got less angle on it so he can sort of stun two cushions to bottom left but he still has a shot of the eight ball and he still makes it in the heart of the pocket Cue ball was very, very close there. He is completely dry, though. Bring Ryan to the table. Complete miss it on the break. Yeah, very fortunate to keep the cue ball on the table. Well, probably reds if this, these two reds are a plant. If they're not, he doesn't have an opener on reds, and he doesn't have an opener on yellows unless the yellow clips back past the red to top left really wants this plant to go. It, it looks okay on the camera angles that we have here in the commentary box. Yeah, it was okay. And he's got a nice little angle just to bump out into, into well, not the middle of the table, but kind of break, break line area. I think he's just about got enough. If he is a touch too straight, and just by the fact he's taken a while here, maybe he is, and he can't get out. felt he couldn't so just think it back and slightly thinner clip here sort of needs one positional shot just to get in line and then it, it could be basic from there yeah that's okay not sure if the red underneath the eight ball now goes to bottom left but should be okay for him to track it to left center you know, top right top left and just leave that angle to drift down plenty of room for the eight ball going to go on and off the bottom cushion just always to me felt a little bit more controllable I think he's still just about straight enough just to hold this but he would love to have two or three rolls less on that down the table now looking at that maybe he has a bit too much angle to do the shot I was talking about so. yeah I don't think he can hold this I was using the yellow oh, he's judged that really well yeah beautiful shot if he gets the yellow full ball, he's, he's perfect. He wasn't trying to skim off it. He was going for the full ball, but it works. A nice finish. You know, very high comparison level here, admittedly, but it reminds me a lot in the way that he goes about it of how Phil Harrison played when he first started playing under in, in the match clock and shot clock era, essentially, in that he, he wants to do more than he's physically allowed to do, and it catches him out and it makes him make mistakes, whereas actually... Once he sort of gets to grips with that, we'll start to see him really fly. Yeah, and you have to say, first of all, what a fabulous break that is. This should be 3-0 pretty quickly with this layout for him. But what a start to his professional career. I mean, straight in, you know, semi-finals of, what, his third event as a professional. It's a brilliant effort. And as to regards to his sort of checking and over-checking, you know, in the sort of similar to vein to Phil Harrison, I think... It, the two things happen there. When you're playing at 30 seconds a shot and you end up using your 30 seconds a lot, it means you're playing an awful lot of a 15 seconds a shot ball when it's really vital frames. You don't get to separate early on because you're not playing as many frames as, as other players might be. So I think I always think players that do use a lot of their 30 seconds could benefit from just overall speeding up and just getting more a quicker rhythm so it's less of a jarring change to the 15.
had some really standout results this weekend, namely against an on-fire Christy Caulfield. I remember Christy won his Champions League group, what now, three, four weeks ago? And has been in sparkling form, was in brilliant nick this weekend. Dusted off Chris Melling in what was one of the matches of the weekend. And it was right for Sani, he put a stop to that. And all the way to the semis. He's done the same as the previous frame. He's left himself too much angle and he's now, he's not as natural a cannon this time round. Well, he has the extension to figure it out. I think the natural line takes him always through the gap of the yellows. So, well, I might screw into the other yellows. Can he get into this enough? Oh, he's very fortunate. He's very fortunate there. Do you think he was aiming for the gap and flicked the yellow, or do you think he was aiming to nest in the yellows? Well, I thought he was going to play to just cannon the yellow, but uh, the way he played it, he was definitely playing the gap and trying to get back out. Well, that was super dangerous. Oh, and those shots are tough. Rolling them in dead straight. Poor player's worst nightmare. Yeah, and that's a major unforced error. That frame was, was done. That frame was over. and Well, that's a, a big... Big, big moment in this match, especially if the yellow passes the eight ball. If the yellow passes the eight ball, this should be a fairly quick counter. And all of a sudden, Josh Kane's back on the break. He gets the next break, and, and players think in those terms, break clearance, and we're all square. Well, the bottom left corner needs some working out. He's going to try and play this off the cushion, off the eight ball, squeeze it through a gap that's barely there. Just like that, good shot. A lovely chance for Josh just to get himself settled. Yeah, the, the yellows look a little bit awkward on the right, they're not. I think the bottom one of the two together definitely goes. Not sure if the top one does or not, but it's easy enough just to pop the bottom one and, and work these out. Oh, well, that's one thrown in. That's a major surprise. Two missed pots in the match for Josh Kane. Yeah, he's seething inside. I think more than anything else, he knows that it would have been 2-1 on, on the break, but it would have really been a painful one for Ryan to take. And he's just let him off the hook completely. Just see who's, I'm not sure who he's having a conversation with there. He's got a few familiar faces around the, the venue here tonight. Josh Kane almost indicated to me there that he almost twitched that yellow rather than anything else and just felt like he wasn't, you know, where he wanted to be. Yeah, well, he was off angle just enough that if he plays it as a nice, comfortable punch through, the cuba would have ended up nearer the cushion. And he wanted to make sure that he was off the cushion so that when he played the next one in the middle, he could get to the bottom of the cue ball, which is what he would have needed to do. So it was just a sort of delicate sort of stun shot that he was playing, almost like a, you know, a, like a, just nipping it, stopping it almost as dead as you can, even though it's got angle. So it, it was just one of those sort of shots. But even so, I mean, it's still an incredible miss. He's trying to inject a little bit of life into his performance here. This is a 15 second shot clock. I don't think we've heard the beeps yet in this visit. Josh is he's playing angry pool. He needs to, doesn't he? With three frames behind now with four minutes to go. That's a bit between. It's going to be really hard to connect these two uh, two yellows together. Jeff way around. Oh, he's done well there. Look how much side he had to play it with bridging like he was as well, just shows how good a curious he is. Yeah, what a visit. Yeah, cheers. 3-1. The deep, you know, Tom Cousins this weekend is a prime example. He played his best for about 25, 30 minutes at most in the whole weekend. But he, he found a way to get through and keep himself in the tournament and then when he needed it, he found it. Yeah, we mentioned Tom Cousins. I was about to say it reminded me of uh, Josh's frame. Just then reminded me of frame from the final last night because Tom Cousins missed a ball that he could make blindfolded 
and there was an audible gasp around the venue as no one could quite believe what they'd watched. It was as rattled as I've ever seen TC as he sat in his chair. And the next frame that he came out, he, he battered them all off in about 30 seconds flat and you could tell how frustrated he was. But it almost shocked him into life in a strange way. Oh, where's the cue ball? Now then, 2.45. Mm. Quick finish here, cue ball in hand for Josh. He could leave a minute and it's his break. Really short position required on the first red. Red's at the bottom, just one directly below the, the eight ball. Does that pass to the bottom right corner? If it does, this should be fairly simple. So the foul brings cue ball in hand. Josh has now used that. This is just a regulation visit from here. Even if that red blow the eight ball doesn't pass to bottom right, he can just track down. They now take it bottom left. Straight in bottom left is perfect as well. Dropping it in there means it must go bottom right. Yeah, the quicker the better here, Josh. He's still going to leave a minute 30, isn't he? That's plenty. Loads of time. Rapid clearance after rapid clearance from Josh Kane. Keeping on that eight ball. Eight ball goes in, it's a golden break and it is an instant win. Well, it's not quite an instant win. Is it a good leave? I don't think it's bad. Two reds are awkward top right. The yellow doesn't go top right unless he thinks the yellow will go. Well, the yellow's a non start to look at the ones at the bottom. So it has to be reds. But these two at the top are actually a little bit awkward. He might have to find an off angle plant. Might have to play it now. I think it's worth the risk. He needs to play it quite firm as well. The red can't land. The first red that he hits is automatically going towards the side cushion. He can't stick it behind the yellow. Oh, perfect. Oh, I couldn't have played it any better. Okay, oh, now. we've got game on now in the final minutes. Don't need to overthink these, Josh. They are all there. It's actually fairly natural. You can just flow here, use your natural instincts. Question is here, does Josh want to run it right down and make it a buzzer beater, or does he want to leave enough time? I mean, he doesn't really want to leave enough time for Ryan to have the break, because you're not going to get the golden duck, and you don't want to give him at least the outside chance of the golden break. So a buzzer beater is better than just clearing up. Yeah, from here, you want to almost use the beeps. If you can, Josh just had a look. 23 seconds, he's got 30 seconds worth of shots to play. Oh, this is perfect. Use the beeps, Josh, and you can't lose. Yeah, it's got to wait the clock here. He's just got to wait, hit it. On what, two seconds, and by the time the cue ball stops, it will be a buzzer beater. Yeah, well judged. Very good. Those two beeps. I was worried we're going to come in and confuse the situation, but Josh Kane played that perfectly and comes from 3 0 down to draw 3 all. Big result for Killer Kane as Ryan Pisani fumbles the lead at the last. This group just got interesting. <laughs>